Mark Rogers, TV Talk in Arizona State football, and consider all the talent that runs through Tempe to the NFL, but then also consider that for the first time since 2003, the Sun Devils had a player go in the first round of the NFL draft, and, and he turned out pretty well. Terrell Suggs with the Super Bowl championship and a ton of sacks with the Baltimore Ravens. So it's Demarius Randall this time around squeaking into the first round, and we got Kalen Jones standing by from SB Nation's House of Sparky to run down those guys lost to the NFL from Arizona State, but more importantly, who's going to replace them as the Sun Devils look at a very daunting schedule coming up this fall? Kalen, thanks so much for joining us. Let's let's talk uh, Demarius Randall first of all, and let's talk about his contributions, but more importantly, uh, who's going to step in for him? Well, at least for at the safety spot, um, obviously his counterpart was Jordan Simone, who's being uh, considered one of the top safeties, at least at this point, uh, CBS Sports. Has him, I think he's rated in the top 10 as one of the top safety prospects heading into the next year's NFL draft already. So at least a strong safety to cover. But looking at the Marius Randall's position, which was a free safety spot, you're looking at two guys who are probably going to duke it out. And um, James Johnson, uh, I believe he'll be a, a junior this year out of Upland, California. And then you're looking at Marcus Ball, who's kind of that linebacker um, safety hybrid, who probably, in my opinion, fits more of the mold of a um, strong safety. So I I, fend, I believe that James Johnson will probably end up winning that battle. Um, he's the more athletic of the two. Uh, he's six foot one, 192, and he, he's a better ball hawk, played some receiver in high school, I believe, as well. So it, as far as replacing Randall, it's going to be t difficult to replace his type of production. Um, obviously, from the free safety spot, uh, wrapped up, I believe, 80, 85 tackles. Could have had a, a ton of picks. He was definitely in on a lot of pay, plays, but – um, I, I think that as long as ASU is able to generate some type of pass rush in the front seven, then they should be okay, especially looking at the other guys who are involved in the secondary, looking at guys like Lloyd Carrington, who Todd Graham is extremely high on, says that he's arguably the highest um, in, or most intelligent cornerback that he's ever coached. So you're looking at Lloyd Carrington, Questy Brown, even Jordan Simone. So I think the secondary is going to be a strength of this defensive unit that returns nine starters this year. Yeah, you mentioned uh... – Randall filling up the stat sheet in 85 solo stops. 106 is what I've got total. And when you uh, uh, go in with the assisted tackles, uh, that led the team nine and a half tackles for loss, three picks. He definitely supported the run and he was all over the field. So he goes to the Green Bay Packers in the first round. Uh, you also have Marcus Hardison on the defensive front, and you talk about filling up the stat sheet, 15 tackles for loss and 10 sacks. So your thoughts about Hardison's loss and if Arizona State's equipped to uh, – to, to fill in for him? Well, it's going to be interesting to see whether they're able to, you know, like you said, Mark, replace that kind of production. 10 stacks and 15 tackles for a loss doesn't just happen across the street, or you don't just sign, sign it off the street, excuse me. But you're looking at a guy like um, Tashawn Smallwood, who was his counterpart at defensive tackle the, most of the year. I know Hardison was played out of position at defensive end, um, but I think that Smallwood in the interior, um, I think that he's going to have a very good year. He was a true freshman last year. So I believe that he takes the next step this year. Um, as far as replacing Hardison goes at his spot, um, I believe you're looking at guys like Chance Cox, even Edmund Boateng stepping down from the Leo position. Um, it, it's still up in the air. I, I know that Todd Graham is still searching for that kind of replacement, but I, I feel it's definitely going to be difficult. Um, but again, Todd Graham, you know, usually his defenses, they're extremely productive, at least in disrupting the passing game. They usually average around 30 sacks a year. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if he finds – uh, a solid contributor who has a breakout year like Marcus Hardison did last year. So Randall goes in the first round, first ASU player in 12 years, but the most talked about player out of this team going to the NFL draft was definitely Jalen Strong because of the freakish athleticism, also because of the position he plays. It's easy to talk wide receivers. People get amped up talking wideouts, 82 <laughs> catches, 1165 yards and 10 touchdowns. So he goes in the third round to the Houston Texans. Uh, your thoughts about Strong's loss and, and who's going to step in? Well, that's gonna, it's a big loss, Mark. Uh, you know, he, he was a mainstay at ASU over the course of the last two years, and he was really the go-to weapon, at least that true one. But um, we talked about last time, DJ Foster is transitioning back over to that slot receiver role. Maybe he, he'll play some outside, but, you know, Mike Norvell said that they plan on using him all over the field. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But even – um, besides Foster, you're looking at guys like Ellis Jefferson, who are going to step up, Gary Chambers, who will be a senior as well. Um, you've got a Juco transfer and Tim White. 
um, playing receiver. And then even Frederick Gamage, the senior slot receiver. So um, I feel like as far as production goes, I don't feel like ASU is going to miss a beat. It's just they won't have that consistent I, – or I wouldn't even say that. They just won't have that elite go-to weapon that they did in Jalen Strong, who day in and day out – or game in and game out was, was winning every single match of possible. So I, I feel like Burke – this kind of plays the Burke of strength because he, he does a good job of spraying the ball out. And, you know, I, I know that Norvell was speaking really highly of the offense, saying he feels this offense has the potential to really, you know, take the next step. And especially with the transition for Foster going back to receiver – um, this gives the opportunity for guys like De- uh, Demario Richard, the true freshman running back last year, as well as Kalen Balaj, the true running back at last year, to really handle the primary running back roles. And then you add on Gump Hayes, the redshirt freshman who comes in after sitting out last year, who's even getting some time in the return game. So it, I feel like ASU's offense definitely has the potential to really take the next step. Um, I know, that you, again, like you said, you're losing strong. But the guys that they still have there, they definitely have the potential to really be a, a high-production unit. It amuses me come NFL draft time because most college football fans can go three, four, five, even six deep on the wide receiver position and and, and talk about their guys and and they know those guys. But then we see uh, at the NFL draft how important the offensive line is, uh, probably as represented as any position year in, year out in the first round of the NFL draft, especially, of course, at the tackle position. So you lose a good one in Jamil Douglas. He goes in the fourth round to the Miami Dolphins, a three-year starter, Obviously, the leadership, the loss, the the uh, talent is uh, going to have to be filled out there. So how are things going to work out along the offensive front? Well, you still have two really talented guys, at least uh, a, a senior now, and Nick Kelly at center. I know that they, he played some guard as well during his time there. Um, also, Christian Westerman, who's, again, I, I believe he's CBS hasn't listened as the third-rated offensive guard heading in or guard prospect heading into this NFL draft class. So. As far as the off- the interior of the offensive line, it's definitely stable. You're still looking on the outside. I think you're, they're trying to work in Stephon McCray. Um, I believe they're working in another freshman there as well to try and replace Jameel Douglas. But, again, that, that's a guy who was all not only an all, all-conference player, but he was definitely one of the better players at his position in college football. So um, as far as replacing him goes, I mean, it, it's the offensive line unit, and – I feel like as long as Norvell, I, you can scheme around that. So I, I definitely feel like as long as he plays again to his player strengths, then this won't be an issue at all for ASU. All right. Kalen Jones from the House of Sparky on the SB Nation uh, platform for Arizona State Athletics. Kalen, we always love the breakdowns. Good stuff. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having me again.